Good evening, and welcome to Monte Vista's Floral Class. Floral means flowers, but today, look at this. We've got some other fun things that we're doing. Floral also means to be plants. So our class today is going to be on succulents. Even the mask has succulents on, on it. So anyway, let me take the mask off so you, you can see my lips, and uh, we can continue on. Of course, before we go any further, let me uh, give a big shout out to my right hand person, Miss Paula. Okay. Paula, jump I'm in the coming, coming. jump in the in the light in here, and look. Even her blouse is is a nice flower print today. So we're all about plants and flowers. So welcome to our class. I'm going to probably also talk about a lot of different things besides how to pot up a succulent bulb, because there's so many great things that are connected with this. So first of all, what's the difference between a cactus and a succulent. Well, all cacti are succulents, but not all succulents are cacti. Now, I'm saying cacti because that's plural for cactus. However, I have even seen in print the term people are now saying cactuses. So I, I imagine, you know, common language will rotate, but more than one cactus is typically referred to as a cacti. Uh, a cactus, like I said, is a succulent, and it means as this plant that are, are succulents have thick fleshy stems that store water in them. So cactus has thick fleshy stems, but what cactus lacks, they don't have any leaves. They're basically all a stem. And then the leaves have been defined or have through evolution or nature, there has these little, they have little spines. Some succulents will have spines as well, and there are some plants out there that look like cactus, but they come from uh, Africa or Australia. Uh, cactus are new world plants, meaning that you're only gonna find true cactus in South, Central, and North America. So that's my first little lesson there. Succulents and cactus, again, all cacti are succulents, but not all succulents are cactus. All right, so hmm, where should we begin? Well, Let's make sure you all have the proper material. You picked out a pot or, or a bulb. Uh, you have uh, one larger plant. You have hopefully three to four smaller plants. You've got a little clay chip. I think I got them in one of oh, Here we go, a clay chip. You also should have a label. Uh, you have some rocks and you have some smaller gravel. Um, you might want to uh, especially if you're doing this on your kitchen table or someplace nice, you might want to do what I did here and I got a, a, a piece of cardboard or an old towel or something because we're going to make a mess. You know, it's just, this is just the nature of the beast and uh, we're going to get a little messy in here. Which brings me to our next point in here. So we're going to use, we're not going to use dirt. Oh, heavens forbid. This is what we call potting soil. And this is a great potting soil that was donated to us uh, through Kellogg's Fertilizer Company. Uh, it's a beautiful soil of, of amendments and, and mixture. There's probably some compost in it. And you notice some white pebbly looking rock, and that's referred to as perlite or, or sponge rock. When you're working with cactuses and succulents, uh, you wanna make sure that the soil drains well. The worst thing, the easiest way to kill these plants is to overwater them. So you want fast drainage, uh, you also want a light mix because think where most of your, you, you find your cactus. You don't find them growing in the swamps, do you? You find cactus growing in the desert where the soil is very sandy and porous and when it rains, the water goes right through it. So our pots have typically big holes in the bottom in there. A few of you picked up some of our uh, bowls and we make sure we drill holes in the bottom. Anytime when I'm planting succulents at home, I always take my drill and 95% of my uh, pots have holes in them. Occasionally, my glassware, I may have to skip, uh, though I imagine you can find a nice diamond bit drill to drill glass, but I'm not that handy. So I, I usually don't plant in glass, but I do want to make sure I have drainage. But if I put my soil in the pot in here, look at it, it's just going to fall right out of that pot, and that's no good. So there's one or two things you can use. Uh, the fool here broke a bunch of pots, and of course, I took the lemons and turn them into lemonade and we made little chips and that's real common to use a, a piece of pottery chip to cover the hole. You could also use a screen, you can use a piece of newspaper or paper towel. Uh, you still want the water to drain through and the, of course the pot 
or the chip is porous, it doesn't land, lay completely flat, and it will allow the, the soil or the moisture to go through the soil. When you're working with, with soil and plants, you prefer not to have it dry because if it's dry, the very first thing it will do, it will start pushing the moisture from the potting soil or that your original plants in, and sometimes it's tough to get the mixture wet. So the general rule of thumb is, is your potting soil, if you squeeze it, you don't want to squeeze out water on it, but you don't want it to completely fall apart. Notice it still kind of holds what we call ribbing in my fingers. So that's the perfect soil moisture. So make sure you give it a good squeeze. And again, this soil should be just fine. Now, if you're watching this on video uh, this weekend and, and it's been sitting around for a while, you might need to add a little moisture to it and loosen it up. Now, notice on the tabletop in here, I don't have soil, now I have dirt. So my definition of, of dirt is, is, is stuff that you drag into the house, it's underneath your fingernails and you sweep it up. But we're gonna plant in soil, dirt is what I'm gonna uh, brush off my hand in here. Many of you already have your potting soil filled up uh, with your chip on the bottom. If you take it out, if you wanted to take it out and put it back in to make sure your chip, that's fine in here. But again, it, the soil should be nice and, and loose in here. So I want to start with a, a, my taller plant. And again, we have a wider range of plants. In this one sample here, we have the beautiful uh, jade. And again, that's my setter plant in here. This one in here, I have another jade. This one here is called, uh, it has a nice little curl in there. They call that one uh, ET fingers. So I'm gonna start with my ET fingers, my jade plant. And most of them are gonna come right out. Sometimes you may lose a little soil on it, and that's okay because they're going to re-root real quickly here. So, in fact, you may even want to brush it off and shake off some of the soil so it will fit nice in that pot there. And I'm going to make sure that is a nice, firm, yeah, I can't get this. That's a nice, firm fit in the middle there. And I can put some of the soil back around. Now, most plants, you don't like to plant them any deeper than they already are. But with succulents, because most of these are cuttings and we're not going to overwater them, some of them, if they're really tall, you want to plant them a little bit deeper, fine, not a problem. So I picked out three other pretty plants. This one in here, many of you grabbed this. This is one of the ones we grew here at school. Uh, it's very close. Sometimes they call it a mini jade. It's not a jade. It's sometimes referred to as the elephant spurge or a porticaria. And uh, again, these have been rooted in here, and I notice the soil's gonna crump, easily dissipate. And I'm gonna pack it into a side here if I may want to turn it. Then I have some really pretty bright colored little sedums. And boy, that thing wasn't rooted at all, whoever sold that to me. Gave me a little cutting, but that's okay because it's going to root pretty darn easy and quick. And then on this one in here, same thing. I'm going to squeeze it out, and yeah, you see that that's what's happening in today's marketplace. Everybody wants cuttings, and uh, uh, to me, that's a crime. They're selling me a, a cutting that has no roots on them in here. I, I think when we sell plants, unless we're going to sell them as as a cutting, they really should be rooted in the pot. But I'm not going to worry because I do know these are gonna root rather quickly on me, and I'm gonna pop that in there. Now, another real favorite one of mine is this one right in here called the Thumbelina uh, Cactus. This is a really cool one, and many of you grabbed one. Uh, one of the things I really like about this one, it belongs in the family of Mammillarias. Uh, they got really pretty little flowers on them, a little prickly, but not as major as some of the other cactus, but they put out these pups, and these pups if you break them off like I did in here, root so easy. I even could take that little pup off in there. And I'm gonna put this fella, ooh, that hurts. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get it my salad tongs, and look, I can pick it up and protect my hands with a nice, cheap set of salad tongs from the 99 cent store. Or when your mom's not looking, go grab her expensive ones and just wash them before you put them back. All right, so this one in here uh, doesn't have much root yet. It doesn't have any root, but that's like the rest of these in here. And I'm just going to add that fellow here. Oh, look at that. I lost a jade leaf. Even the jade, the leaf itself, 
will eventually root in here. All right, I'm gonna firm that up, firm that up, making sure I got enough soil. I like to use my fingers. I don't want air holes in my plant, in the soil in there. So I do wanna make it nice and firm. You also wanna have a little lip so the water can collect. We'll slide this guy over a little bit in here. And we have some big rocks. And the nice thing about the big rocks is I can use these rocks to help support up the plant. So I'm gonna use three of them and see this guy here is still wants to fall over. That's okay, we're gonna support. You also picked up some uh, nice little, either the little pea gravel with the crushed gravel or the rock. We had a couple different flavors and colors out here. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can use to put this in. I thought I brought a little spoon over. I'm sure I'm, I'm looking at, oh, right here, Paula. And I like to use a spoon or a little scoop. That way I could easily, so it doesn't spill all over the place. I don't want to see any of the soil. I want to make sure it's, it's top dressed. And I'm just going to, and I even like to, on my rocks that I have, you know, I want to make like the rocks were there first and, and I can use this to, and I think most of you have more than enough. I rather, I wanted you to make sure you had more than less. And again, I don't want to see any soil for, uh, showing, so I rather put put it extra, and I can always press it in there to get good firm contact. Because basically, this does two or three things. One, it, it's like a pitcher frame. It finishes up your project. It hides the, the soil. Two, it also helps and slows down any weeds you might want to go. And in the winter months, it adds as an insulator, keeps it a little bit warmer. And in the summer months, it keeps as like your fancy installation in your attic, it also keeps the soil cooler so it doesn't reflect too hot. And again, like I said, you should have plenty of, of this in here. And if you need another rock, the only rule of thumb I like to say, if I'm gonna have to use rock, or if I had a shell or something, I wanna use odd numbers. So if I got a shell, I might use, get a nice one shell in there. Or if I want another rock, I wouldn't just use one rock, I would use two rocks. I like odd numbers. Just nature has something about being odd. It's just, you know, nature, Mother Nature is odd. Shh, don't tell her I said that. All right, and look at that beautiful little succulent. Bowl. You also have a label, and the advantage of a label is two or threefold. If it was just one plant, I would probably put the name of the plant on it. Since I have a collection of plants, I'm just going to call it a, a succulent bowl. But I do want to date it because six months from now, I'm going to say, hmm, was that March the 4th or was it February the 25th? Was that 2020? No, anyway, put today's date or the date that you planted. it. So today is 2-25-2021. And I'm going to write Mona Vista Succulent Bowl. I don't want my label too high. I like to keep it kind of low because it shouldn't be the, your eye should not draw to it. Like this one in here, you know the label's back there, but again, it's not the focal point. The focal point is the plant. So keep your label low, and again, you can, it's up to you to use it. But again, I think it's important to at least date it, and you could either write down or you even put your name on it. So you, so, you know, if you got some brothers and sisters, you can don't have to argue who's this who later on. Now, are we finished? Now, what's one thing that we still got to do? Yeah, for those who said water, yes. Even though they are succulents and cacti, you do want to give it a good watering. So there's a couple of different ways of watering it. You just take a water can or a glass. But what I would really like to do on the first time I plant something, if the not too big. See, I got a container of water right here. And look at this. I'm going to slowly take it and I'm going to emerge it. 
and it's kind of cool because blah, 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 all the air holes are coming out. And since I did a great job with the, uh, the, the rocks in there, I'm not losing much soil. And you can hear it drip away. Now, it's going to be nice and wet. Succulents, you don't want to overwater them. I probably won't water this again for at least another week. As long as you're first soaking, like that was a good soaking that I gave it. Now, a couple other things I, I like to mention. Uh, succulents and cactuses are so much fun. There's so many things you can do with them. Here at Monta Vista, we have a couple greenhouses loaded with succulents. We're going to do a plant sale end of March. But if you want some succulents or cacti, we got plenty of cuttings. Uh, Miss Bonnie Hendrickson gave us a bunch of cuttings. We also have some great plants growing outside. The AOM. I think I'm saying that close enough. Very easy to root. You can just stick that in the ground, puts out roots. This is sometimes called the ghost sedum. We got this growing outside in front of the NPR. It cuts real easy. One of my favorite cactus is this one here. Notice how I'm handling it. What's cool about this, it's thornless. There's no thorns on it, and this grows really easy. The one word of advice I do when you plant cacti and succulent cuttings is you don't want to pick them real fresh and stick them right in the ground. They will rot. So like this particular branch in here, or actually they refer to this as a pad in, in cactus term in here. It's been sitting around for a while. The cut is no longer fresh. As the case of the one that I picked earlier today, this one in here, you notice how green it is. If I try to plant that right now, it's going to rot. So you kind of want it to callus up or scab up. Let it sit for a week. You can either lay something like this flat on the ground and it will start setting up uh, new shoots, or you could actually put it in, in soil. So look at some of the neat little cactus cuttings that we have in here that if, if you want to come by tomorrow or the next day. I, and I mentioned to you, even with the, uh, the Thumbelina cacti, uh, look at these nice little pups that it has put out. Oh, look, here's a little pup that fell off. I'm going to take my little extra container and some of my soil that I have, and I'm going to make it sure I understand. Even though it, it's fresh, I just won't water it. I'm going to push that down there. And next year when we do a succulent class, that would be a, a nice full little th uh, thimble cactus for you guys to grow and plant. All right. I'm pretty sure that's it. I think I covered most of the bases. Uh, again, don't leave your mom's kitchen table a mess. Get a little broom, sweep up. Uh, I'm letting this drain before I move it. I'm going to only water it about once a week outside could take a once they're established they could take full sun but they really do best in the container with a little shade or keep it in inside on your kitchen table or your kitchen windowsill as long as it gets bright light so there you go Monta Vista succulent flora class next month it's going to be a fun one so we'll see you next month have a great evening thank you